I added Mon Chop to my stream that I can experience every time someone chats, also levels up and evolves. I got this idea when I wanted to improve my stream and then Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is dropping pretty soon. And I want something interactive that anyone can participate in. So I started off with my favorite Pokemon, Monchop. So I found a website that had animated sprites of the whole Monchop family. I downloaded them, including the shiny ones. So I started off with my favorite Pokemon, Monchop. I found a website here that had animated sprites of the whole Monchop family. I downloaded them, including the shiny ones. All right, to help me with this, I'm using Streamer Bot. I need a way to store the experience points, the level, and I guess the shiny, if it's shiny or not somewhere so all i have is a file here that actually has the the level the exp and the sh if it's shiny or not and that's going to be accessed from streamer bot so it shouldn't be that too much of an issue and so if i level up i increase the level by one and i reset the exp to zero so in streamer bot there is a way to actually add your own c sharp code right and bare bones it doesn't really have any libraries but did you know that if you actually go to the settings and go to the C-Sharp compiler, you can add your own libraries. Like I needed the IO function, um, the IO DLL, so I can actually access the file with my code and also have threading to add input delays and stuff like that. So that's where you add your references. Just right click here and then just add reference from file. So I spent most of my time looking at this wiki, just seeing how they access variables and what kind of methods I have available. Um, they have the Twitch and OBS stuff. So I've been using most of that. And then variable types, just looking at the arc, they have arc function. We can actually see later. Here is where I spent most of my logic. And then I made a action Pokemon RPG. And then I do have read lines, which actually just reads the file. And then it stores it as variable as line. Each line is represented as line 0, 1, 2, and et cetera. So here it is how I broke it down. Level, EXP, and Shiny. So the most important part is reading from the file and then writing into the file, right? So down here, I have update level exp, which is taking the level experience and a shiny. These are just parameters here and it writes into the file. So next I want to be able to check for the experience points. And then when it hits the threshold, which is when it levels up, the Pokemon should level up, right? And so I went into the Wikipedia. I just type in Pokemon exp chart. And I started using this erratic formula. And then after I started streaming and testing it for a bit, I sh it was too slow because it, compared to the game, each message is one EXP. So <laughs> it took forever for it to like hit level 28. It even got to like level five. So I changed it to be more of a fast EXP. Um, I haven't tested that out yet, but um, I made it from zero to 95 to just use the fast one and once it hit 98 it'll just be like the regular one in game yo going over the stream again the exp was still too long so this is me in the future i am actually made it one fifth of the exponential uh cube so i made that all one fifth and then the the final one will be two fifths so it kind of scales a little bit <laughs> now so in order for me to actually have it activate after every message i went to commands Right, and then I actually made it so then it takes this special exp regular expression. It's called like the wild card, right? So I have here a period which represents any character, any single character, and then I have a star which means zero or more. So I have any character zero or more. So whatever message pops in, it will activate and it trigger the Pokemon RPG action. So there's no cap for the leveling, but I do want it to reset every stream because I don't want it to get too big and I want each stream to be like its own adventure and I only want it when there's only viewers there, right? I don't want it just automatically starting with the bot messages leveling it up, but it'll be there just to help it out, you know, so it won't be too bad. So I do have this first command on my stream and I decided to use that to start it off. I made it so that it starts off with a shaking Pokeball and then it has a text under it that tells people to type first to open it and it'll spawn the Pokemon at level one and a random chance if it's shiny or not. Yeah. So how do I reset it automatically? Cause I'm lazy and I forget sometimes. Um, so I've been digging around and eventually I found this initial function that I can run here called int. At first I thought maybe when the, the function actually get compiled or when the stream bot actually starts, but no, it's only when the first time you call this method, it would initialize. So I had to go make another command 
call reset Pokemon here and then I have the code in here. And this will automatically just reset everything. So it sets the Pokeball in. I do have a Pokeball that shakes, right? When it pops out and then I reset the first um, command to be like, yo, type here to open me. And I also remove the the Pokemon that's currently on the screen and I reset the EXP to zero and level to zero. And then of course I just put shiny as false cause then it will get initialized again anyways when you first call the first command. Oh, since unfortunately I can't actually have it do it automatically on streamer bot initially only when a method gets called the first time. I actually did the same thing with the special magic wild card. <laughs> the command where it takes in the, the dot star and in parentheses. So every time anyone does message, it'll first call this. But in here, I actually didn't do an execute. I only did initialize and it's always only called once and only once and that's it. All right. So next is the animation. So I'm thinking maybe like an indicator for when it's getting XP, but I don't want to spam every message. So I made it every 10 messages instead thinking about it. And then I was like, how, what kind of indicator can I use? So I'm thinking of a berry because Pokemon use berry, but I need to find one that maybe give it a buff. So I found one in Pokemon Sword and Shield, the Lychee berry, which actually give it stats. It's not, it's not giving like experience or anything, but it's close enough. So in here, we actually have um, every 10 messages because I'm using here EXP percent, which is modular 10. Uh, so modular means that if you divide it by the number and then it will give the remainder and the remainder is the answer to this expression. And obviously when you divide by 10, you want the remainder to be zero, then you know it every 10. So, and you don't want it, I don't want it to level up. So that's why this one is here. So it makes sure it's not zero. So I actually got the lychee berry. I went to Photoshop and then I made an animated picture of it falling. It's about 1.2 seconds. So I add that to my OBS and made it invisible. So when the berry eats, it make it visible, right? And then delay it. That's why I need the threat sleep that I mentioned before, uh, for one one point one second, and then hide it again. So that's that. And next we have to level up. I kind of did the same thing with this, but with I found a Dragon Ball Z aura. I added it in there. <laughs> I did the same thing, but the the animation only lasts for like half a second. And now is the most important part, which is like the evolution. But I need a way for displaying the level so people know what level it is so they can anticipate. Um, so I add a text in the Pokemon, in the OBS uh, using Pokemon text, right? I found Pokemon text. So I add it in there and it may just display the level. But here, where I need to check if it's level 28, evolving the Monchoke uh, level, there's no way for me to trade Pokemon here, right? So I just put an arbitrary level, level 70, make it some kind of high. So kind of like a goal or anything. Um, so Monchamp will evolve at level 70. So to make it easier for me to just like pick things, I just made an enum up here, which is kind of holds a Monchop, a Monchoke at 28, a Monchamp 70. And then I just check if the level matches that, uh, the Monchoke, then it's 28. And then I pretty much just update the picture to be the Mancho one. I just changed the source. And then same thing with Monchamp. So that's how I did that with the animation evolutions. Um, I was thinking like if I made it greater than or equal to, but no, I just want to evolve at that time. I don't know if ever it's going to jump e EXP anyways, because it'll do one at a time. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. All right. So the way I coded this with the enum is kind of not too hard. Right, so I have a monster up here. I can just change the name and I just change the enum. And then I probably have to change the variable names here just for like these two. But it shouldn't be too bad if I want to switch Pokemon. Um, I do need to figure a way to refactor this. Like I want like this method down here, update level EXP. I want it to be, I'm using it in multiple places. So I want to be able to have it like just sitting there as a library or a class and I can if I could only have a way of an action accessing another code from a different action, like just part of it, not, not the whole thing. Um, that'll be great. Um, just the method though, not, not like call action, call another action. No, I want actually the execute code method inside there, but I don't know if there's a way to do that. But, um, in the future, I do plan to maybe add an enemy Pokemon that may be spawned every 30, 30 minutes. It'll battle it. And then if you lose, you get EXP. 
I mean, if you lose, you lose EXP. And if you win, you get EXP. And um, that's this if I don't get lazy. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video of my journey and explanation. With that, later days.